All right, this is going to be a tutorial on VMware ESXi, and it will be several parts overall. The first part we're going to do is just a regular VMware vSphere Hypervisor ESXi. First, we're going to download it. Um, you're going to have to sign up for an account, and you'll download it, and it comes with a free 30-day trial uh, of the full featured, and then it goes to the limited features. Um, one of the first questions you might have is why ESXi instead of um, something like Windows Hypervisor or uh, Citrix's uh, Zen server, I believe it's called, um, which are other competing products. Essentially, I chose ESXi for two simple reasons. One, we use it at work, so I'm sort of familiar with it. And two, um, it apparently runs Linux hosts a lot better than the Windows Hypervisor or the Citrix one does. So that's the main reason for that. And after we go ahead and download, you're going to burn it to an ISO and you're going to go ahead and plop it in your server. A few things to note is that your server is required to be 64-bit. Um, that's a big one, especially with VM uh, ESXi 4.0. And Another thing, oh, they have this on their uh, little comparison, Zen Server 5.6, Hyper-V. Um, these are obviously a lot of things that home users aren't going to really care about um, too much. I only have one physical host, I, so it's not a big deal if I have you know, vMotion or anything that will move my virtual machines from physical host to physical host. Um, after the uh, after the disk is put in, it'll go through just a basic, very simple setup. Just go through that basic setup, and then it'll just go to a screen that says, to manage this, download the tools from, etc., etc., and it'll give the IP address. And you'll go to the, uh, wrong one, you'll go to the IP address. And it'll come up with, there's a problem with this website certificate. Go ahead and hit continue, um, and you're going to come up to this VMware ESXi welcome page, and you're going to download the vSphere client. That'll take a while. It's a very large installation, and after you install that client, I'm going to go ahead and it'll put in the IP address you have to and root, and then no password is the default login, and it's going to take a little while to connect the first time. Um, uh, it should boot up. And then evaluation layer. Oh, 60 days. I thought it was 30 days. You you will get, when you sign up and download, you will get a uh, free or limited version or limited functionality version license that you will enter when you're ready to not use the full features, which is a, kind of a sad day. But um, as you can see, your host, main host, is right here. And you can do new virtual machines, new resource pools. All that will be covered in later. Um, this is just a basic setup, and that's pretty much it right now, of course. That's the basic host, and it has everything installed. Um, one thing, it's sort of, ESXi is sort of picky about what hardware it has. They actually, during the install, they give you a URL to a hardware list, HCL. And um, I didn't even check that before trying it, but it all works so far. Um, and obviously I would go through a little bit of all this and you can see it, it really is a very nice interface and yeah go ahead and just look through all that you'll notice my data store one this is I have a just a small parallel ATA that I installed on I would really recommend <laughs> getting some, a USB hub that plugs directly into your motherboard. That's what's recommended. But uh, I really didn't have much. So I just use a, a regular parallel ATA drive. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is add, I have another disk drive in there, um, which is going to be where I store mostly everything, is going to be, it's a, a one terabyte drive. Um, nothing special, but I don't need too much. I'm just going to be running two virtual machines on this. So we're going to go into configuration and you'll notice I have it on storage and it should be on health status by default. We're going to go into storage. We're going to add storage 
and a regular disk. And boom, right there. There's my serial ATA disk. Oh, that's not good. That was odd. All right, it's working. So then we're just going to enter a regular, simple name that's easy to remember, like a VM. Sure. So just a note to you, all of you out there. Make sure your date and time is set correctly. Alright, so back after that. That was a treat. I had to go into the command line, which you can enable by um, hitting F2 on your actual host. So going to your host, hitting F2, setting the password and then enabling remote support, which is SSH. And then you can just SSH into it using your username of root and then your password. And basically, I had to F disk into my disk, which you can find by going to CDVM, or let me see here. Oops. Um, CD VMFS and then CD devices and then disks. And essentially that's a massive list of it, but um, what you can do is you'll copy the identifier from in here. I'll show you in a second. It's not showing up. Oh, there it is. And um, under devices, you go copy identifier to clipboard. And then you'll just do an F disk with that identifier. And that's not going to be it. <laughs> identifier and essentially I deleted everything on there and then you're going to make a new partition so you can new partition and then uh, primary partition then it's partition one and then just uh, create the partition with the VMFS uh, file system so and then you can go back and add it without any issues so now you notice that I have another data store, which is awesome. All right, the next thing we need to do is take um, our, I have two Linux uh, physical hosts that I need to convert to, uh, you know, VMs. So we're gonna download the VMware converter client for Linux, which is a tar.gz file. And then we're just going to unzip it, and then it's a Perl install script, essentially. So you're just going to run that Perl install script and answer all the questions. Um, I did install the server as well, because I have two, and I think this one will act as a server for the other one. Who knows, but... And since all of my servers are headless, I'm going to be using SSH forwarding to get this done. So. Essentially, we're just going to run VMware Converter Client, boom, and it'll pop up here, and connect to a local server because it's running on the same host, and let me go ahead and alright, so this is going to be pretty easy. 
first we're going to hit convert machine and then you know you can drop down the source infrastructure virtual machine um, workstation virtual machine backup image or third party virtual machine virtual appliance powered on machine is going to be pretty easy and then we're going to specify the part on machine and since it is a local, to convert the local machine, enter its IP address below. And this is 192.168.1.100. And we'll just use, uh, may not need that, but we'll drop it down, select Linux. We're going to go to next. All right. And we're going to set up networking in a quick second. And essentially, VMware and hardware compatibility with Nix is unfortunately not very well uh, supported. You're going to want to look up VMware's HCL and look up the whole networking list. I had about four network adapters here and I thought, ah, one of them will work, but uh, that's definitely not the case. Make sure you um, go ahead and look those up. And some of them are supported, they're just not um, not uh, on the HCL. And and I've got to get this right. Okay, all right. So under properties here, our virtual switch is zero. We're going to add network adapters. This is my onboard uh, network adapter. And then we're going to add these two here. And these will add those to them. Um, and we're going to do them on these. That's pretty simple. And it's going to add those two NICs to that uh, VLAN. That switch, I should say. All right, now that we have these two NICs added, um, they are unplugged, as you can tell. We're going to actually add another switch. That's not what I wanted. Add. That's also not what I 